Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that may be. Let's talk about mental health. Welcome back to Unconventional Asians, where we dare you to be authentic. And of course, a taboo topic in Asian cultures is mental health. Well, what else do you think I'm going to talk about? Let's get back on a serious note, though. Uh, today, we're going to discuss how it is like to be a caregiver if you have a loved one who has a disability or a mental illness. So why is this such a hush-hush topic for Asians? I know with my parents and a lot of the Asian community, your kids are your bragging point. Basic thing, right? Uh. And when one of your children suffers from a physical disability or a mm. mental disability, and it is one of those, like, how do we hide this? How do we downplay this? How do we mm. smooth it over so it looks good for everyone else? And, person, and I'm just the brother. Like, I'll be honest, That's I try right. to hide it as well because I learned it from my parents. I personally had the experience of being a caregiver and I definitely understand it's no walk in the park. The statistic right now in Canada is one in two will yeah. suffer a mental issue. It is such a prevalent problem that it affects almost everyone, but unfortunately there's no clear guidance for it. Today's guest, Mahendan Sivan from the blog Challenge the Challenge says, this shouldn't be as hard as it is. Yeah. Taking care of a family member should be one of those baseline things that should have already been figured out. Dan grew up in a Sri Lankan Canadian household with an older brother who was born with a learning disability and later developed schizophrenia. There was no talking of what's happening, what is mm. the game plan, who's doing mm. what, and revising, is this still working? Growing up, he and his family just assumed mm. the other side would take care of it. His parents were immigrants to Canada, which can add to the complexity and challenges to their situation. The way I see it is, my parents immigrated from a different country, came mm -hmm. here, were kind of okay with English, trying to figure out, trying to get a job, trying to just basically survive. And then yeah. you throw, oh, here's this other layer of complexity. Now what do you do? Mm. It's where the language barrier, being an immigrant, uh, yeah. for them, a little bit of distrust of like, who can help, who's willing to help, yeah. And not understanding the system itself. Right. It really played factors into what was going on. There can be such a disconnect between his immigrant parents uh, that comes from a society that is collective in nature versus himself who was born in Toronto in Canada, who was raised with values that are very individualistic. I'm just going to focus on me, make sure I'm not a burden to my parents so they can focus all their attention on my brother, which is right. what, what I thought being a good son was. Like, I just did not cause a lot of problems as far as mm. I can remember. And like, got good grades, went to university, got a job. Like I tried my very best to not need it. As any money from them. Like I yeah. really tried to be like as minimalistic as possible. And, and then, but th from their point of view, it's like, okay, we're just gonna support me. And like, okay, he's gonna go to school. He's gonna go do this. He's gonna make yeah. money. And then he can take care of us and mm. my brother. And like, I didn't sign up for that. They, I assumed one thing, they assumed another. And mm. there's none of that talk because because for them, it's like, well, that's what culturally we've always had to do. So why not? Mm, <laughs> why did you change right. it? When did you get to? Break yeah. Them Avoiding the issues at hand or just being quiet or about our struggles can be very detrimental in the well-being of everybody involved. That is a very negative way of dealing with it because the problem is first, you cut yourself off from possible help you could be getting mm -hmm. for both you and your child. Yeah. Right. So that was happening a lot in my family because we were like, we weren't reaching out. It stops us from asking for help as much. And yeah. especially from friends and family who just by their nature want to help. And then you're just like, oh, we'll suck it up. We'll, we as a family will figure it out. I was like, yes. That was yes. Ridiculous that is kind of the go-to response for a lot of people it's okay to say like hey i'm out of my depth here i really don't know where to go i think communication uh in the first place among uh asian families is not our forte <laughs> especially around the men i gotta say mm. to be honest my dad and me we it's hard communicating it's, yeah. a, it's hard to break that not, not language barrier but social barrier feeling incredibly alone with my problem Eventually, Dan faced his issues head on and started to look for solutions online. I went online and I started looking through websites and, and then I'm yeah. like, 
nothing really particular to Canada. Like right. we have government resources, but we don't have somebody saying like, okay, here's a walkthrough. Here's like yeah. things that you can work through or this. Like there are programs that help so much, yeah. but sometimes they are government dependent. So they'll mm. finish or something mm. will pop up and nobody will know about it. This inspired Dan to create a blog that covers all the nuances of mental illness and disability within a family to help those who are living in Canada. Yeah don't know what they need. It's for the caregivers as much as it is for the individual who has that sort of disability they're trying to live through or live with. Because I want to meet other individuals who kind yes. of go through my circumstance, who yes. are dealing with the same things we are. Because I'm not going to catch it all. How do you create a system that works for both the caregiver, mm -hmm. the person with a disability, and society, and putting that all together? Yes. In a holistic approach yeah exactly. that's going to take years let's let's be honest yeah. having a spot where all of this exists how we can have places where having a walkthrough would be nice and so is there anything that you do to uh help yourself with your mental health in these situations the thing i gotta say is to make space for yourself let's let's be honest the issues that are facing the caregivers and people yeah. with who live with these disabilities are mm -hmm. It sucks. Let's just say it. Oh, it's, oh I know. It's, it's It doesn't feel fair. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. And it's not. To give yourself space to like, today, I'm just like, this morning, I'm just going to cry about it for an hour mm. and then let myself feel shitty for an hour. Yeah. To say, like, uh, my parent is just driving me off the wall. I just I just need a, a half day to just recoup. And it's okay. Yeah. It's It doesn't mm -hmm. make you a bad person. Does this sound so exhausting as a caregiver? Dan is going to share with us what will make it more sustainable for us in the long term. The ideal case is for them to live independently. And That's right. Of it, course. It feels so wrong. Yeah, it's but, almost like you're abandoning them. Yeah, but it's not. It's, it's okay not. to say like, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. It's not okay to say, I can't do this. I'm not going to, like, that's it. I'm gone. That's a very yeah. different story. Like, I can't do this. So let me find another way. That is not abandonment. Mm -hmm. That is making a system that is sustainable for both the caregiver and the individual. We hear you. This is a journey that is very tough to embark on. You are seen, you're heard, and now we have a resource that we can go to uh, for more information that can guide us in the right direction. Join Dan at challengethechallenge.com for more resources and also to have a community of like-minded people who are struggling through the same thing. Remember, you're not alone in this anymore. Thank you so much for watching Unconventional Asians. If you like this type of content, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Share with us in the comments box below what type of unconventional topics you would like us to cover. Make sure you also click that subscribe button for more videos like this. Until next time, Dare to be authentic.